Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here with Chegg. In this video, we're going to be discussing cylinders and quadric surfaces. So here you can see a rough sketch of a cylinder in three-dimensional space, and here's the equation x squared plus y squared equals a squared. You'll notice that the z is missing. So this cylinder is generated by moving a vertical line about the circle. The circle itself is called a generating curve, and the vertical line is called a ruling. So it's a really interesting way to graph a cylinder. Let's talk about quadric surfaces really briefly and then do an actual example of classifying a quadric surface. These are the six types of quadric surfaces. Let's go over the formulas briefly for all of these and then we'll do an example. The first one is called an ellipsoid and its formula is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared and that's equal to one. Notice it reminds you of an ellipse, hence the name ellipsoid. So very easy to memorize this one compared to some of the others. Then we have the elliptic paraboloid. It's z over c equals x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. Then we have the hyperbolic paraboloid, which is z over c equal to x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared. Notice the similarities, right? The hyperbolic paraboloid has a minus, think of hyperbola, it has a minus sign in two dimensions. Elliptic paraboloid has a plus, think of an ellipse, it has a plus sign in two dimensions. So easier to remember because of those relationships. Then we have the cone, which is z squared over c equals x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. And lastly, we have these hyperboloids. We have the hyperboloid of one sheet and the hyperboloid of two sheets. Notice in the formula for the hyperboloid of one sheet, there's one minus sign. And in the formula for the hyperboloid of two sheets, there's two minus signs. That could be a useful memory trick. The formula for the hyperboloid of one sheet is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared minus z squared over c squared equals one. And for a hyperboloid of two sheets, it's negative x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared equals one. And again, you have two minus signs in the one for two sheets and one minus sign in the one for one sheet. Our example is to classify this particular surface, x squared plus y squared minus z squared minus two x plus four y plus five equals zero. Let's go ahead and work through it very carefully. So in order to do this problem, what we're going to do is we're going to complete the square and then just basically use matching to match it to one of these quadric surfaces. So in order to complete the square, we're going to group together all of the x terms. So here we have x squared and here we have minus two x. Let's write those down. So x squared minus two x, very nice. Now let's go to the y terms. We've got y squared and a four y. That's plus y squared plus four y. And then we've got the minus z squared, which hangs out. So minus z squared. And this plus five, let's subtract it over to the other side. So this is equal to negative five. All right, so now we're going to complete the square. So I'm gonna write down x squared minus two x. And in order to complete the square here, you look at the coefficient of x, you divide it by two and you square it. In this case, the coefficient of x is negative two. So we divide it by two and then we square it. That's just going to be negative one squared, which is equal to one. So I'm gonna put a plus one here. You might say, hey, you can't do that. You can't put a one there. You're right, I can't. But I will fix it later. When we finish completing the square, I'm gonna add a one to the other side, which makes it okay. So then we have plus y squared plus four y. And again, completing the square again. So you get four over two and you square it, right? Take the coefficient of y, which is four, divide it by two and square it. So two squared is equal to four. So we just add the four. Then we have this minus z squared. And this is equal to negative five, but we're not done. A very common mistake here is that people forget to add what they added over here. So we added a one and we added a four. So we really added a five to the left-hand side. We have to add a five to the right-hand side. Now let's go ahead and complete the square. Well, go ahead and factor rather. We've already completed the square. So we have x squared minus two x plus one. It is now a perfect square trinomial. So this factors, it's always parentheses and x and a two. You keep the sign, so minus, and then you divide the two by two so you get one. 
People often ask, how do you go from here to here? What did you do? It's just memory. You put the parentheses, you put the two, you put the X, keep the sign, divide the two by two, and you get one plus parentheses Y, parentheses and a two, keep the sign, divide the four by two, and you get two minus Z squared equals zero. That should be good enough, but I'm going to write it another way. I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to write it as Z squared equals parentheses x minus 1 squared plus y plus 2 squared. And that's our equation. So now we have to classify it. And the answer to this problem is it is a cone. We have the equation of a cone. And if you're wondering why, well, you can just simply look. In this equation that we have in this answer, every single variable is squared, right? We have the x squared, we have the y squared, and we have the z squared. They're all being squared. So if you look at the equations we have here, think about the ones that have everything squared. The ellipsoid, but that has a 1 in it, right? We don't have a 1. And then there's a hyperboloid, but that has a 1 in it. We don't have a 1. And then the hyperboloid of two sheets also has a 1. So the only one that actually matches is the cone. We actually have the equation of a cone. So because they're all squared and we're missing a 1, the answer is a cone. Hopefully this video has helped you get better. Uh, even if just a little bit at this particular topic. And I hope it's been helpful. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out more videos on Chegg. Until next time, good luck and take care.